Good evening, everybody. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. We welcome you ringside for a much-anticipated bout. Let's set the table for you and get ready to dish up this big night of action. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Ali's movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Teddy, through the history of the sport, this is one of the matchups that has produced some of the more interesting fights, especially in the lower weight classes, speed versus speed. Who's going to be the guy that uses speed better? Who's going to be able to time shots and control range? That's what I'm looking at. The Giants missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. Very accurate two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Here's a moment here as you see the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science, not just some raw savagery swinging out there. Look at the little subtleties here, Joe. What he does is he forces him into a position to stop the punch. And then when he stops, steps back, makes a miss, and comes right back. And now targeting his opponent with the overhand right. Flush with the combination upstairs. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. What? Well, supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Ali's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. Up and down, side to side. What a big shot, that hook right on the gut. Right hand crashes home. He never saw it coming. He should tie up. The end of the round is upon us, and now this fighter will hear some attaboys from his corner. He just got to his man good. He did, and he's feeling real good now, having that kind of round. But he also has to hear something else from his corner. Don't forget how you got to that point. Don't get intoxicated. Don't get drunk by the success of that one punch. Listen, I don't want to see you against the ropes. It's like a whole new fighter out there. Look at him as we start this round. Remember what happened to him in the last round. Now, he's up on his toes. Yeah, well, remember what happened to him in the last round. That's what we say, but he doesn't say that. He's putting that out. He's putting it into the rearview mirror. He's going forward down the road with a lot of hope, a lot of vigor, a lot of confidence. He missed by a mile. That wasn't even close by Muhammad Ali. That is a strong uppercut there. Good shot to the head with that right hand. Nice block by the Giant. Oh, what an uppercut. Teddy, there's a certain fire that rages in Muhammad Ali. A lot of it has to do with the early days and some things he faced growing up in Louisville. Yeah, I mean, he's a sensitive person. He's a person that takes that sensitivity and he puts it somewhere in a place, as you said, sort of in a furnace that can burn strong. You know, this was during a time where this country was uh, not at its proudest times, the way that it behaved towards black people, towards African-Americans, and he remembers that, and he uses that in a positive way, in an athletic way, in a way where it just prospers him career-wise. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Back to the body! Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. Able to cover up that gut. 
We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Ali's hand speed is right now the difference. Teddy, you got faster hands, you're halfway home. Yeah, that's a great, great asset to have, is to be able to do that. But there is a way to negate it, to counter it, and that's to time the punches. Timing can beat speed. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. You see him holding on. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Unable to connect by Muhammad Ali. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own a left hand scores. Ali's showing you a little defensive skill there. I don't move away from that punch. A stabbing right hand comes in by the Giant. Last 10 seconds of round number three. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Let's go. What are you waiting for? You want this fight? Then let's get moving out there. This guy's gonna win this fight. If you don't take control, son, you need to take control. While things continue like this, this is gonna be an interesting stretch run of this fight. Beginning of round number four. Well-targeted double jab by Muhammad Ali. Stay away from the inside. Good-looking counterpunch. Ali's committed to that counterpunching very early on here in this fight, and that can pay off as the night continues. Well, it's paying off right now because you see that his opponent now is getting a little worried about letting his hands go because every time he does, he doesn't find anything, and he finds something coming back at him. Resourceful hook by the Giant. Turns over the hook after turning away his opponent's shot. Yeah! Halfway through this round here. Relax, relax. You see him zeroing in with that left hand to the body. Fires right back at him. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Good, solid right hand by the Giant. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. He digs in with an uppercut after blocking that shot away. See, that's the work they want to see with the right hand by the Giant. Ten clicks of the talk. Ali was able to get to his man in that last round. Now he's got some momentum. You know, everyone thinks he's not a puncher, but he puts them together. And he put those punches together where he got the effect he wanted. Ali's doing a very nice job here. I like how he's able to 
lands some shots at longer range, keeps him away from his opponent's power, but yet allows him to control things. Well, first of all, he understands how to do those things. He's been trained in the gym, but he also recognizes what his opponent can't do. He understands side side. that he yeah. has an opportunity to fight this kind of fight because he's got a slow-footed, cement-footed guy in front of him. by the Giant. Scored well with the hook after blocking that shot. Ali's swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. Teddy, what would you recommend based on what we're seeing here tonight? Well, two aspirin and then go. Oh, no. Actually, I would say a little counter-punching would be just what the doctor ordered. That's a better prescription for him. Coming to the end of round number five, last ten seconds. And round five comes to an end. Ali's going with a quality that I think is very underrated in boxing, and that is to be judicious, to really think about when, how, and make the most of each thing you're doing. His punch rate, very, very effective in terms of his percentage landed. Yeah, he's throwing educated punches. You know, he's not wasting anything. He's making everything count, but just as importantly, everything's leading to something else. You know, he's working the body one moment, and that's leading up to something. He never knew it was coming. Look at how wide open he was for that hook. Lost right hand to the body. Took a shot, now he gives a left. Watch that! Ali's doing well, sticking to a game plan on the outside. Good accurate work there after blocking that blow. In a later stage of the fight like we have right here, when you see one guy consistently getting hit with the right hand, what is the answer? Move your head. Oh, nice jab there by Muhammad up. Ali. by the Giants. Really good work right there, landing the two punches in sequence by Muhammad Ali. Really on the mark with that over-the-top shot with the right hand. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. Clean and crisp, that is the way to describe the punching we've seen out of him tonight. Not much left in this fight. Teddy, not much doubt as to who's controlling him. No, a triangle is better than a square. Why? More size. And he has shown me a lot of size. Given angles, counter-punching, working inside, working outside. That's why he's the man. Not able to land the uppercut. Very nice work there. Jab. Uppercut. Ali's combination that was landed moments ago is a one of those examples of what every trainer would really like to have, and that's a fighter with good hand speed. Yeah, and he's showing that right now. Now, 
The trade in the other corner hopes he has a guy with good timing because timing can negate speed. Keep your hands up! Piercing jab. Scores up top with a left. At the halfway point of round seven. That's a well-scored left hand by the Giant. Ali's way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. Ali's going to think about the next time he throws a punch because he just got hit by a good solid counter. And he's holding. Lands flush with the two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. Flush shot lands after blocking away his opponent's effort. Ten seconds to go in the seventh. You gotta land a big punch now. No doubt about it. You are losing this fight. You need to throw and land a big shot. Look at me. Knock this motherfucker out. This Start of round number eight right here. Teddy, this is very much a one-sided fight. Maybe the opponent's best chance is to go back to history. Lamada and Dotiel. Lamada was so far behind going into the last round that he had no shot except by a knockout. And what he did was he played possum a little bit. He shook his legs a little bit, went back towards the rope, and he got Dotiel to come in, get a little careless, bang, he pulled it out. The Giants' legs look shaky. He, oh! Oh, an explosive headshot there. He is down. But he's going to continue on, beating the count. That was a miss by the Giant. A little head hunting with the right. Ninety seconds to go, halfway through round eight. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Let's move! And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. Well-placed counterpunch by the Giants. Right to the head with that right. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Last 10 seconds of the eighth round. Come on, get focused. And round eight comes to an end. Muhammad Ali is in control of this fight, Teddy. Sometimes you can just look at it and see it as clear as day. He's ahead on the scorecards. Yeah, I have my head on my scorecard, too. But right now, he can't afford to coast because this guy is still dangerous. He has to still stay on his P's and Q's. I really like what he's doing here. I mean, if you were to pick any one piece of weaponry that you say aligns with what he is strategically as a fighter, it is the jab, and he's firing it off beautifully. And he's firing it off consistently all night at the right distance. He's getting full extension on that punch. And that's making him effective offensively and safe defensively. He's out of the other fighter's range.
You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. You see how quickly he pulls the trigger on the hook after that block? Halfway through the ninth round. Sharp two-punch combination by Muhammad Ali. Ali's ability to properly throw and land his combination has been stunning. Teddy, why is he so successful? Because you just said it. He's putting them together. You know, one or two wouldn't land, but he's handcuffing the guy. And the first two punches, they set up the third and fourth. Punch. Last Punch. ten seconds of the just ninth like that. round. Just like that. Now his opponent got away from that uppercut. We come to the end of this round, and for this fighter, I think that's a good thing because I was looking at him there, Teddy, and it looked like he was breathing in and out of his mouth for most of that round. Yeah, and that's a bad sign. That means that the gas tank is a little low. He's low on petrol. See, that's what you want from his left hand. That's exactly what it should be doing, that left hand by Muhammad Ali. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Hold out. Keep moving around the ring. Good return fire that time. And just like that, things turn around. A back and forth round. Both men have been rocked. Look at that. This is going to take some guts to get up from this. Once again, he goes down. It's over. The fight is over. Muhammad Ali's gunned down yet another opponent, a knockout victory. By way of knockouts, your winner, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. That woke up the fans. Wow, did that wake up the fans. A fight that was assured of heading to the judges' scorecards, it ends by knockout. That's why as a trainer, you like a fight that's close, that's closely contested, there's a little danger going on, because then you know that your guys can stay alert. Here, there was no danger, he fell asleep, and now he is asleep. It was a good one indeed, and for Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time at the fights.